Extended Access Control List Hi, if you have watched my previous videos on Access Control List, probably you've learned uh, what the concept of Access Control List is and uh, what are different types of Access List. If you remember, with, uh, in that video I talked about the concept and then after that I told you what are different types of Access Control List and then we went through a scenario and I showed you how to configure a Standard Access Control List. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about extended access control list. We want to see what is the difference between eACLs and uh, standard ACLs, and I want to show you how advanced uh, extended ACLs are compared to the standard access list. Then, as usual, I've created the lab for you, and then we go through the lab, and I'll talk about AC, uh, extended ACLs uh, while we configure it uh, in that lab in more detail. Uh, so here is our objective for today. We talked about extended IP access list and then we're going to create um, these type of access list in our lab. Uh, in previous video I showed you different types of access list, name access list and numeric access list. Uh, and we configured it for a standard access list. So the same thing is true for extended access list. Again they have a name access list and they have numeric access list. Just the number is different that I'll talk about it uh, shortly and uh, we'll see what is the difference between that and uh, standard ACL. But when you go through uh, seven layers of OSI reference model, in standard access control list, we were just looking at layer three. And at layer three, your access list was looking at uh, just source address. So all the decisions uh, were made based on the source address. But extended access, extended access control list looks at the layer 4 as well. Because here, extended access control list looks at the type of protocol that you want to put restriction on. And to decide about the type of protocol, it looks at the source and destination port address as well. So at layer 4, we have source and destination port address. Extended access list also looks at the higher layer as well, but in this video we're just going to stick to layer 3 and layer 4, but later you'll see that session layer also comes to the picture. So if you look at the uh, structure of an IP packet, uh, you see here I have a package, one part is data and the other part is header. If you go in more detail into the header, you see that we have uh, different fields. Uh, the most important part of this field is source and destination address for us. Uh, as I mentioned uh, just now, uh, standard access list just looks at the source and IP address, but extended access list looks at the source and destination IP address. Now if you go in more detail into this data part, meaning go one layer higher, you will see that in that data part you have another package which is a TCP segment. TCP also has two parts, data part and header part. If you go in more detail into the header you will see that there you have so many fields as well. Among all these fields that we have, two are important for us. Source port address and destination port address. So extended access list looks at the source and destination port as well as source and destination IP address. That is basically the difference between standard access list and extended access list. So let's go through the scenario. I explain our scenario, our lab today, then I go through this lab, I configure everything, I'll show you where you have to configure extended access list and how to configure it. Then I talk in more detail about uh, the concept here. Uh, you see this lab, in this lab we have two routers. Uh, assume that these two routers are your own router, meaning you have control over these two routers. Then here you have your lab that you want to put restriction, you want to configure access list for these people to decide who can get access to what. And here are a few servers on the internet. Uh, for example, I use Google uh, Web Server and Google Mail Server uh, for this example. Uh, so according to this lab and the scenario, 
I'm going to allow PC1 to get access to HTTP services on Google. And I want to allow PC2 to get access to SMTP services on Google, meaning this one is uh, web services. You want to get access to the home page of Google. You want to surf the web, whatever related to Google. And this one is uh, mail services, uh, simple mail transfer uh, protocol. And then uh, we want to block all other uh, PCs in this network, meaning no one else other than PC1 and 2 that I define that they can get access to what no one else is allowed to get access to anything else on the internet so if I use standard access list it's impossible to configure this because I'm saying who is gonna get access to what so I'm talking about source address and destination address and even in destination I'm talking about the service so with standard access list you cannot do that that's why you need to have to use extended access list. And for the purpose of today's lab, I, I'm not going to use GNS3. I'm going to use Packet Tracer, which is another simulator. Uh, still, you can use GNS3 and you can configure everything on GNS3. But for me to test my configuration, it's easier to use Packet Tracer. So here is the topology that we have that I've already created in Packet Tracer. I've already assigned all the IP addresses, uh, these three networks that we have, I've already assigned the IP addresses, and I've already uh, configured a routing protocol so that everyone can see everyone else. For example, from here, PC2 is allowed, is able to, uh, to ping uh, Google server, uh, web server, and uh, uh, Google mail server. So let's try. I go to command prompt and from here I ping uh, for example this address 150.100.10.2 so that's 150.100.10.2 and you can see that I can I'm able to ping uh, that server on the other side so after configuring uh, my access list I shouldn't be able to ping. I should be able to just send the HTTP packet or SMTP uh, request and nothing else. Okay, now the question is where should I configure my access list? Because the first step is configuring your access list on one of these routers. So where should I configure it? Router 1 or Router 2? In this case, it works on both routers. If you configure it on Router 1, it works. If you configure it on Router 2, it works but there will be a small problem if you configure the access list on router 2 you're supposed to block PC4 and PC3 right so if a packet comes from PC4 it comes all the way he goes to router 1 it will be processed here and will be sent or forwarded to router 2 then at this point router 2 will decide okay I have to block this packet and it will discard the, the request from PC3 or PC4 if you configure it on router 1, the same thing, router 1 will decide. But the difference is that your packet comes all the way, it has some processing lo load here, then it creates traffic on this uh, link. Once it reaches here, then router 2 discards the packet. So if you configure it on router 1, then you haven't created the uh, traffic here on this link the link between router 1 and router 2. So it's better to configure it on router 1 because you will have less traffic. As I told you, you can configure it here, but you will be creating some traffics here which uh, you don't want it. So a rule for extended access control list. When you want to configure extended access control list, always configure it on a router which is closest to the source Remember, for standard access list, we said always configure it on a router closest to the destination. Here in extended ACL, I say configure it on a router which is closest to the source. So if I go to this scenario, where is my source? Source is the one that you want to put restriction on. So here is your source. You're saying allow PC1 to get access to some services somewhere so any packet from here 
I'm gonna put restriction on it. So this is my source. Now, who is the closest router to the source? We come all the way, go through this switch, you reach this router. So this router is the closest router to the source. Then after that, you have to apply your access list to uh, interface to an interface. Now, which interface should I use? Again, the same rule. Always configure, apply your access list to the interface closest to the source. So in this case, the packet comes all the way. It reaches this interface. So this interface is the closest interface to the source. So you're going to configure your access list on this router and then you're going to apply it to this interface which is fast Ethernet interface. So I go back here to my uh, packet tracer. I click on this router and here I'm going to configure my access control list. To configure access control list you have to go to global configurations. So enable and config T. Now I'm in global configurations. There are two methods that you can configure extended access control lists. Either use name access control list or use numeric one. If you want to use number access control list, you have to type access, uh, sorry, access list, then question mark, you choose a number. For extended access list, the number should be between 100 to 199. Remember, standard was 1 to 99 so extended is 100 to 199 if you want to configure name access control list you start with IP access list and then you decide what type of access list you have to choose what type of access list standard or extended in this case we want extended so I say extended access control list let me resize this. Then, question mark. Give it a name. A name for your access control list. So in this case, I'm going to say a uh, EACL. Extended access control list. And then press enter. Once you press enter, you are in configuring extended name access control list. So you're configuring name access control list. Okay. What we want to do according to our scenario? We want to allow PC1 to get access to HTTP services on Google. So here is allow. So I have to permit. Permit what? As I told you, extended access control list works with protocols. So here you have to decide HTTP protocol. What type of protocol is HTTP? Is it a TCP protocol or is it a UDP or is it ICMP? What is it? Uh, if you don't know what type of protocol you're dealing with and you don't know, for example, what type of protocol is HTTP, it doesn't matter. What you can do, you can go to run. Here is my run command. And then you follow this address. Go to wherever you have installed your operating system for example Windows C drive in this case I've installed my operating system my Windows in C drive so C Windows system 32 drivers etc then press OK and here you have one file which is called services double click on that and open it with, for example, Notepad. Okay, so I resize it again so that you can see it. Now here you see all the protocols that your system uses, the port number, and the protocol that they use. For example, in this case, I'm going to use HTTP. HTTP protocol uses port 80, and it's a TCP protocol based on TCP so now I know that here I have to choose TCP so I say permit TCP protocol then question mark to whom is it 
uh, a whole network that you want to allow permit or block or is 